talent, passion, commitment. These are just a few of the elements that go into making a video game. But in order to meet the many challenges and endure the pressures of creating an independent game, it takes something more. In these indie game devlog series of videos, we'll take a look at games, past and present, and go through the steps, processes, and workflow we and others took without a budget and sometimes even single-handedly to fight the odds and fulfill a dream of creating games. Our hope is that you learn from the successes and failures, the mistakes and accomplishments, and use the knowledge to help you make the next great game. So join us as we go through the making of Origami Ninja. Origami Ninja was developed in Unity and created without writing a single line of code. Though this isn't a tutorial, in this video series, we'll walk you through the steps we used to go about creating the game. Originally, Origami Ninja was said to be our first publicly available commercial product. However, we first needed to secure the funds to supplement the income we'd be making from our jobs in order to work on the game full time. Since we were relatively unknown and didn't have anything developed yet, we knew that crowdfunding the game through websites like Kickstarter and Indiegogo was most likely not going to work. So we decided to go the traditional investor route. So what you see on screen was created as a seed money investor pitch. And while the game is fully playable and feature complete, as far as its core mechanics are concerned, it was never released to the public. Origami Ninja is a single-player mobile touch-based fighter, and everything from the menus, mechanics, effects, and gameplay elements were created without writing a single line of code. In future videos, we'll go into more specifics on how we created each element. That being said, this series will mainly be focused on the project as a whole and giving a more holistic view of the process we used as a team of two at the time to create this game without writing a single line of code. Pre-production. One of the things we've come to believe is as a game creator, the challenge isn't coming up with an idea because everyone has ideas. The challenge is coming up with an idea that's not only exciting to create, but that's also feasible and fits within your and your team's time and resources. What you're seeing now is a time lapse of the initial brainstorming session. Our initial goal was to create an anime inspired mobile JRPG that allows players to gain new resources, skills, moves, items, weapons, and fighting techniques to aid them as they progress through their journey. Since we wanted to include permadeaths, in other words, once a character dies, they can no longer be used, instead of focusing on individual characters, we decided to focus on clans or factions. So as you improve and progress, while your character may die and you lose all the items the character has equipped at the time, your overall resources, skills, and moves can be used by anyone within that set clan or faction. In this brain dump, we focused on the elements we wanted to incorporate to be able to deliver the type of game and experience in a way that was fun, replayable, and allow us to continue to introduce new elements into the game during its life cycle. Since this was originally set to be a commercial product, we also had to have a plan and create elements that we'd be able to monetize. And while we hate monetization in games, realistically, if we wanted to secure seed money, as well as continue working on this project after its initial launch, we had to show how the game would be profitable. Once we'd hatched out all our ideas, we settled and agreed upon these elements you see in the chart on screen. Then we translated it into a macro design doc, just to make sure we were both on the same page during development. We also knew it could be a guide for anyone that would hopefully join the project or aid us in development, with the hopes it would allow them to quickly get caught up and informed on the game we were seeking to develop. Something to keep in mind when planning out any game or project 
is before you create your first pixel, polygon, or line of code, it's crucially important to acknowledge and define the project's constraints on the front end. For example, some of the constraints we defined in this project were platform, the graphical limitations of the mobile platform, team size, small two-man team, development time frame, game development from start to finish should be no longer than two to three months max before initial launch. And while three months may seem long to some, for only two people, both with full-time jobs, families, and other responsibilities, we knew three months would be here before we knew it. That said, we knew by keeping our initial vision small yet scalable, this would be the key to actually being able to finish the game on time. Additionally, since we were working with a fairly short deadline and there were only two of us at the time, to help us with project management and keeping track of deadlines, we chose to forego setting up our project in an agile tool such as Scrumwise or Hack and Plan. Instead, we simply used Trello. And while lacking the analytical data of many agile tools, Trello is much faster in terms of initial setup. And we believe it is a great tool for smaller teams or projects. With everyone agreeing on the direction and vision of the game and its mechanics, we began work on the art assets. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.